Welcome to my channel, INTJ Island. Today, I'm going to talk about an INTJ's introverted love. I have discussed love and romance in several of my videos, and from the comments they have generated, I think that many other INTJs have experienced many of the same things I have as relationships have formed and sometimes failed. I would like to take a closer look into the process of love, as I see it, from an introverted feeling perspective. Love grows inside, where our introverted structure feeds and nurtures it. Inside our minds, it can be the ideal, perfect, and its extremely intricate branches can grow in lovely shapes, colorful and delicate. Our mind builds a perfect image of love and what the object of our love seems to be to our introverted self. Science has shown us that our sense of sight is more in our heads than in our eyes. What hits the eye is enhanced greatly by knowledge of what we have seen before. When we recognize an object or a person, our memory fills in details beyond what our eye is giving us. It is so natural that we don't even notice it is happening unless we see an optical illusion that tricks our minds, or we suddenly and unexpectedly recognize someone whom we had previously thought to be a stranger. In a similar way, when we fall in love, our minds fill in the details of our lover's face, body, actions, and voice, and these details are enhanced by our ideal conception of love that lies within us. When we fall in love, what is inside us is connected with the external object of our love, and in a sense they both become one. It is very difficult to find flaws in the perfection of our introverted ideal, and because we are projecting that ideal outward towards our lover, it is very difficult to see flaws in her. When a flaw must be accepted, our minds quickly work to find a way to justify it without damaging the ideal within us. The entire range of interactions with our mate is filtered through our ideal pattern, and from the smallest kind act to the depths of passion in the physical act of love, our ideal is invoked within us, and a connection is made like a short circuit from the outside world to the world inside of us, and the internal ideal resonates like a beautiful crystal structure at a perfect frequency to harmonize with our very being. It is the closest thing I have ever experienced to true perfection of happiness and of ultimate peace. The object of our love may well be living in an extroverted mind that enjoys the physical thrills and the things we do to show our love in a completely different way. An ESTP or an ESFP might be overjoyed in the moment at the wild and passionate sensations that were barely part of a far deeper, almost mystical connection for you. She may then desire to move on to find something else that is exciting to experience, while you are still working on the deepest part of your emotional being, saturated with the feeling of completion of your own ideal in this act. Two people living through the very same event, even sometimes as intimate as making love, may well be having two very different experiences. The differences might range from something almost sacred to having fun like on a carnival ride. That is not to say that an ESTP, INFJ, or an ENTP can't love deeply and faithfully, but it can be like arriving at the same destination by a different route. Our introverted intuition can bond with our introverted feeling to do some amazing things with our concept of the ideal love. With the right partner, this can lead to a near form of worship and adoration that can wrap our maid up in a blanket of apparent perfection that can't help but flatter her ego. If you find a mate who can balance your tendency to idealize her with acceptance, and then who will return your love in a way that makes you both happy, the two of you can form a heaven on earth together that will last a lifetime. However, where this can lead to trouble is if we bond with someone who is happy to simply drop and run. You think you have found true love? the one who will share the rest of your life in bliss, and suddenly she is gone and you are left with a broken heart, like a bull has run right through your introverted china shop where your ideal love has been constructed with such care, and you are left in misery trying to understand how and why this horror happened. She walks away, doesn't look back, and apparently isn't upset much at all by the final separation. You feel like your world has come to an end. As INTJs, we live on the inside, 
we shape the outside and are good at it, but our emotions are inside, where we try and keep them safe. As happens when we fall in love, or when we have been stabbed in the heart and abandoned, it feels like it is forever. Our introverted feeling is like a child, and can be hurt like a child can be. And as you have noticed, a child lives in the moment, thinking that whatever is going on now is all there is. Pain is terrible, and it won't go away. Joy is wonderful, and it is all there is in the world, while the child is feeling it. As INTJs, we spend so much time in the stratosphere with our intuition and thinking dominating our days and nights that we tend to forget or push aside our younger selves, our feeling and sensing. But they are part of us, and when they fill our minds, they can be like unruly children at a church service, interrupting everything. I sometimes drive my wife crazy because the way I deal with these things is to create structure and to set ground rules so that my mental children don't get out of hand and make life distressful. But she can toss a grenade into my system at times by saying that she wants to do something that involves people and she wants to do it right now, without warning. This is quite disruptive to my mental processes and it is a lot like the feeling I get when I find myself falling unexpectedly. I don't like it. Fortunately, after all these years of living with her INTJ, she expects my reaction to be what it is, and she works through it with me, bless her heart. Humans are not perfect, but the ideals that we create can be. Our internal ideal of love, residing within our introverted little hearts, and perfected by our introverted intuition, when projected outwardly, onto the one we fall in love with, will obviously clash with reality in some ways. They might clash in some very big ways, but that can add a lot of spice to the relationship, and it can be very good, provided the one you love is in love with you and willing to work with you to shape a lifetime romance. My ESTP wife is drastically different than I am in many ways, and yet she has, in her own way and using her own methods, come incredibly close to my introverted ideal of who she should be. She has also helped me to see why my ideal needed work, and I have made adjustments to that ideal over time, and I am better off for having done so. In a way, it seems impossible that any two people could bond together for life, and to grow together, to love together, to be together for year after year, and remain happy and passionate towards one another. But when two are so different as an INTJ and an ESTP, it seems even more surprising. And yet, I have watched it happen, lived inside this apparent contradiction, and come to realize that love is not only passionate and demanding, it is also malleable, and can become many different shapes which allow for true joy to exist where you would think it would be impossible. Does this resonate with you? What are your views on love? and how it works in your life. Please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please click like, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you click on the bell, you will also receive notifications when I put up a new video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.